you don't need all of these things. You, but some of them are essential, and there's a lot of things here that are optional. Uh, most the, first of all, you need a good pair of scissors. Now, I use several types of scissors. These plastic handled ones are for paper. And the girls know that they, if they need to borrow a pair of scissors, this is the type they're allowed to use. Anything that's made has metal handles is forbidden. It's off limits to everybody but me. So because what if you cut, uh, you, you, I'm sure you know this, but if you cut paper with fabric scissors, it dulls them very quickly. So we keep, we keep scissors with plastic handles for cutting paper. So when you go to cut out your patterns, you'll use these scissors. When you go to cut out fabric, you'll use these scissors. So these are the paper cutting scissors, craft scissors, anything that's not fabric. You get these, this type of scissors. And then I use, um, these scissors are for metal ones that are for cutting fabric. And I use a large pair of scissors for most of the cutting. Now you can use pinking shears, and I have them, but I find pinking shears to be extremely heavy and difficult. Yes, pinking shears do help a little with fraying. The fabric will still fray anyway. It just stops it. It probably may not fray as much. It'll fray in the little areas that are, with the, that are pinked. Um, however, I find that if you don't use, move the fabric around very much, um, it won't fray that much. It's, it frays from you're constantly folding up and moving it. So that's why I only make vestments during vacation time when the girls aren't here, so I don't have to take everything off the table, including my fabric pieces, and then put them out again, in which case they will start to fray. So um, I use just straight edge scissors for, for cutting fabric. I find it easier, and these are nice and sharp. These are an optional pair of scissors, but I, if you make a lot of vestments, you really need these. These are called duckbill applique scissors. And they're made to be cut, they're made to be used in this direction on the fabric. The fabric lays across this duckbill part, and therefore you don't cut away fabric that's underneath it. And these come in handy, um, especially when we're doing the lining, and you end up having to cut away the excess lining from your main fabric. Um, this way you can go around and just cut it and you won't be cutting your main fabric which is underneath. They work that direction. Um, so uh, that's the duckbill applique scissors. And of course it's always handy to have another small pair of scissors for cutting threads, especially when you're doing hand sewing, trimming away a little frays, which you can do with these as well. But small scissors do come in handy. Mostly use these over at the sewing machine for, for cutting the threads. So you need some good scissors. You also need some measuring items. You can use a yardstick. You can use this, this a pl clear plastic um, ruler like this comes in handy because you can put it right on top of your, your fabric and see exactly where your line is to measure. This is a quilting ruler, uh, but it works with all kinds of sewing. But you, again, a yardstick, whether metal or wooden or, you know, a 12 inch ruler is helpful. Though you really need something a little longer than 12 inches uh, because when we go to put them together, we'll be using a lot of measuring and 18 inches, sometimes you go that long, over 12 inches. Um, this is a handy little ruler. This is for if you measuring seam allowances going around the edge. I don't use it very often, but I find some people, um, can't live without it. They, I eyeball seam allowance, so I don't measure it, but if you want to measure seam allowance, that's, that's handy. Um, another important item is pins. And we use, for this, for vestment making, we use glass head pins. And I constantly have to replace the pins because they disappear after every class. People, people take them home with them because they have things that they're not finished sewing and they're still pinned up. So they, I use also a pin catcher, is what I call it. Um, this is called a grab it. This came from Joanne, so did this one. 
This one was in the quilting section and I don't like it as much because the pins tend to stand straight up in the air. This one lays them out nice and flat. Both of them have magnets in them and that's handy because you can throw your pins at it and it'll catch it. And if you dump your pins on the floor, which happens often, you can just go down and, shh and pick them all up. You don't have to pick them up individually. Uh, so this is handy. The problem with them is that they often drop and break, um, and then you end up having to replace it. Uh, but the, we, the reason we use glass head pins is because we use a lot of steam. And because the iron has to be hot, if you used craft pins, and I have a box of them over there, they have, a, uh, they have more of a colored head. This is a craft pin, I can tell by looking at it. There's a black mark on one side. That's where it got melted. Now that plastic is either on my iron or on the fabric somewhere. So that's why we don't use craft pins because the heads melt. And whenever I find these, I try to take them out because people come with their own pins and they get mixed up with my pins. And, uh, but the glass head pins, you can iron on top of them. Of course, they're glass, so they won't melt. Uh, they don't, they don't um, leave gunk on your iron or in, in, your, in your fabric. Another advantage to them that is the class that we had the last, uh, the last class we had last week, they were making gothic vestment. And this doesn't happen often, but for some reason we had both, la both ladies in the class did it the same, did the same thing, and actually sewed the pin into the, into the, into the vestment at pretty much the same place. And with a glass head pin, it's easy to take out. You just take a pair of pliers, you find it under the fabric, you squeeze the head and break it, because it's glass, and it becomes a powder in your, in, and you can pull the, the shaft of the pin out without making a hole, digging a hole into your fabric to try to fish the head out. So it has a few advantages, um, which are nice. So we use glass head pins. Uh, the, uh, ne the next most important thing that is not optional is um, we use something, we, we don't hand baste in my class, I'm basically a very lazy person, and I found long ago that stitch witchery is a very good replacement. In fact, it works better than hand basting because even hand basting you can get puckering in your in your trim as you sew, baste it down. Where stitch witchery will glue it very flat. And uh, we use two types. Now there's, a stitch witchery is a brand name, and, but it's, the, it's a fusible web, is what it's technically called. And it comes in types like steam a seam or heat and bond, or a stitch witchery. And we use two sizes. We use the quarter of an inch, and we use the half inch, I think this is half inch, five-eighths of an inch, five-eighths of an inch. Um, and we use, we use a considerable amount of these, both all of these, because we will glue everything together before we sew it. And we sew once, after pretty much, there's, after each step we will sew, but everything gets glued before we get to that point. Now there are some fabrics that you can't use stitch witchery with them. And these are high nap fabrics like velvet. And if you try to use stitch witchery with velvet, you, of course you need a needle board anyway to use, to, to use velvet. But because you, and you won't be sewing from the wrong side on the needle board, so that means you're going to, because with the stitch witchery it has to be on the top, you will be pressing down your nap and leaving um, iron marks. So with velvet you need to use um, a glue. And there's, you know, this, this is a white glue. Aileen's no so it's a fabric glue. It's a white glue and it's very runny and it goes on white and it's supposed to dry clear. 
and I do mean it's supposed to. It does most of the time, but depending upon how thick you put it on, it may not. Um, it's not my favorite glue. My favorite blue glue is Beacon's, um, this is called Fabri-Tac. We used to use this a lot when I'm making dolls we, um, for lots of different things. And um, Fabri-Tac is clear. And it's like almost like a contact cement, and it has that, you know, when you take it, it has that long string that goes with it because it's, but it dries very quickly. This dries very slowly. So this you can use, when you glue with this, you can use, um, you can move on very quickly. You don't have to hold things in place very long. Um, it also, another thing that we use fabric for, um, fabric tack or any glue for, is sometimes to make little repairs. Let's say you are clipping your edges and you clip too far. And now that's going to fray and it's going to open up. And when you're doing your, you're putting your lining in, you find the spot. Just put, you put a little bit of glue on it to stabilize it. And, and then you can, you can continue on. It won't go, do anything. Sometimes if you're, you're trimming your applique around the edge, you clip too far into the threads, and these threads are beginning to pull up. You can take a little bit of, on a pin of the glue, just kind of grab the thread, push it around to the back, and it'll stay. You don't want to leave globs of glue on the top. So you just kind of let the glue catch the thread, pull it around to the back, and push the glue off on the back. And it will hold the, the threads in place. It's, it's a nice emergency fixer. Another thing that I use fabric glue for is sometimes I have to fix a vestment, a priest will bring a vestment, and you, generally the fabric is rotten but the embroidery is gorgeous. And you want to save the embroidery, so you're going to replace all the fabric, and you keep the embroidery as one piece. And then you find there's a little place of fabric or a few stitches of the embroidery there that is coming undone. And you use, can use some glue to stabilize those stitches, so they, they won't unravel anymore, the fabric won't rot anymore and you can use the embroidery the way it is without having to totally take it all apart and sew it all back together again. Um, so fabric glue is a handy um, help, especially for fixing mistakes or, or repairing things. It's, but it's not something we use very often. It's just, but it's nice to keep in your, in your um, toolbox. Another necessary item is some kind of marker. And I, there, of course, they make different types of markers. One of the most common markers are these ink markers. Now, uh, they're called vanishing ink markers, and they vanish, the ink vanishes in one of two ways. If it's, um, a, water, if it's a water soluble ink marker, it's made to vanish by when you wet it. Well, we're working with steam, and so the steam is going to make your marks vanish. So we, the water-soluble type doesn't work that well. The other type, which I think is what this one is, it disappears over time. And so that, what do they mean by that? Well, that means that over time, in, after a while, the marks should disappear. What happens is it disappears because of the moisture in the air. It's attacking it just like the water does. But um, what happens is sometimes on a humid day, it disappears very quickly before you want it to. And then you have to hit it with a hot iron to bring it back. Unfortunately, though, sometimes hot irons set the ink and it won't disappear after that. So I avoid, and, and also they're expensive. The, these markers are good for about one time, and then they dry out. The first time you open them up, they'll work fine, but the next time you go to use it, you'll find it's dried out. Even though you put the cap back on it, they don't last long. It's, it's like any other magic marker, you know, you almost, every time you go to use it, it's usually not working. So I don't use ink markers very much. I use chalk, and chalk comes in several colors. And uh, you, you can find um, this type. I got this type in Joann's. It comes in a, 
comes in a little carrier and you could take the white chalk out and put the blue chalk in and it has a nice thing you can hold it keeps it off your fingers though really the chalk doesn't get on your fingers and it has a sharpener in the top that you can get a nice point on the top of the of the chalk and you use the dark blue one on light fabrics and you use the white on dark fabrics and I find this chalk this is, is uh, I use it a lot and I've it's one of my favorite. But also, you can all get these markers, and these I also like. This is by Clover, and I think I got this from Clotilde, but someone said that they did get one in um, a quilting shop. So I don't know, maybe she got hers from Clotilde too. But these are nice. There's, there's the chalk is a powder in it, and when you put it down and you run it, it makes a chalk line. And it makes a very fine chalk line. And this one I also this one I got in Joanne's in the quilting section, and this one has blue. And they, you can get it with pink or yellow or whatever. You won't see it on here probably, not too well. Um, it makes it does the same thing. These and these are nice markers. So you need some something to make a, a marks with chalk marks, or a pen to make other kind of marks. I, I prefer the chalk. So these, are, these aren't options, these, these are things you have to have. 